we close our eyes when we meditate so that we can pay more attention to what's going on inside. Because the source of our suffering is not out there in the world. You're not going to see it with your eyes. You're going to see it in your mind. So you want to look carefully. You don't want to have any distractions. Now eventually you do want to be able to meditate everywhere, in any situation. But we want to give their full attention to the mind. Close your eyes, watch your breath. Because the breath is the physical thing that's closest to your mind, most responsive to the movements of the mind. And the knowledge it gives goes both ways. You can use your thoughts to change the breath. You can tell yourself to breathe longer, and you'll breathe longer. More deeply, you'll breathe more deeply. Whatever thought goes to the mind, the breath will respond. So you can use that to dress up the breath, make it really comfortable. Think about saturating every cell in your body as you breathe in, every cell as you breathe out. And breathe in a way that's refreshing. At the same time, because the breath is so responsive to the mind, you're going to learn a lot about the mind. As you watch the breath, it's like looking in a mirror. If there's dirt on your face, you'll see it in the mirror. Any distractions are going to come in the mind. You'll see the first in the breath. There'll be a slight wavering in the breath. That's a sign that you can take that, okay, something's moved in the mind. And you want to watch out, because all too often the mind lies to itself. It makes a decision and then pretends that it hasn't made it, especially when you're sitting here meditating. The delinquent children in your mind have decided that they want to wander someplace else. So they're going to wait until you have a lapse in mindfulness, and then they're going to go. And they've already made up their minds, and you were there part of it, but then you deny it. You tell yourself, I'm here meditating. See, I'm meditating with the breath. But then as soon as your mindfulness slips, then you're gone. You want to see that tendency the mind has to cover things up. Because that's where ignorance lies, and wherever there's ignorance, there's going to be suffering. So try to be as continually aware all the way through the in-breath, all the way through the out. If you move from one thought to another, be aware of all the steps in between. Don't blank out. That way you begin to see things in the mind you never saw before. So as you work with the breath, you'll learn about the mind. At the same time, you give the mind a good place to stay, because many of the insights, as I said, will have to do with seeing how you've been lying to yourself, and it's not a pretty thing to th see. But if you're coming from a sense of well-being, you can gain these insights in a good-natured way. And let go in a good-natured way. You don't let go out of disgust. You just let go out of seeing how oh, enough of that. I've seen through that. And that kind of letting go is really solid. Because if you let go out of anger, things come bouncing back. But if you let go out of a sense of having outgrown something and seen through something, it doesn't come bouncing back at you. You can free yourself from it. Or actually, what ha actually happens is you free yourself from your, your grasping. It's not that those things tie you down. It's your own greed and aversion and delusion that tie you down. When you can stop doing those things, then you find that you're free.